Hi, Will from Fellow here. We're gonna go and have a look at our king crabs that came in this morning. These are our uh, Norwegian king crabs. So nice and lively this morning. Quite small, they're, they're not massive because they're used, they're basically fished using the brown crab pots because we've not got the infrastructure yet to fish the, the large ones that you'll see on deadliest catch, but you can see they're nice and lively. Good amount of meat on them. They're currently coming from the north coast. Uh, so it's a small fishing firm basically near Newcastle. It's the first that we've ever seen in UK waters. So it's the first um, that these fishermen have ever, ever seen. So it's still a very new product on the market. So obviously we're still trying to work out the best way to cook it, prep it. Um, they're working out the best way to transport it, the season, all that stuff. But yeah, at the moment, it's just a really fun ingredient to play around with. Um, we're really enjoying trying out new different exciting dishes with it. Quite tricky to prep. Um, obviously they're covered in sharp spines. So that's why I'm wearing a double layer of glove. They've not got the sharpest claws, but uh, if you get nicked by one of these little legs, they're very, very sharp and spiny at the end. So you really want to kill them as quickly as possible. And to do that, they have this small flap. They say you're meant to pierce it with a spike, but I think it's easier just to go in with a knife. And then just to double make sure to kill it as quickly as possible, just go in through the top as well with a, with a hard style deba. So you can see now that's completely limp and lifeless, it's ready to cook. So in the 1970s, Russia imported Alaskan king crab into the northernmost region of Russia to try and create a Soviet renaissance in fishing. Those crabs have constantly been working their way down through Scandinavia, and the worry has always been that they're gonna to come to the UK. Potentially, we could have a new invasive species which threatens brown crab stocks. And when king crabs move, they, they move in an ocean, like a blanket across the ocean floor. So they'll destroy scallop beds, they'll destroy oyster beds, they'll destroy pretty much everything that moves. So it could be a really negative thing or it could be a one-off, um, a seasonal thing that comes down when, when the waters are a certain type of temperature. But it's, it's a good thing that we're highlighting it and that our fishermen are talking to us constantly about what's going on in our waters, you know? Right, so now these, these aren't gonna take a huge amount of time to cook. You can see they're quite thin, quite small. So what we've got here is we've got boiling water. Um, you want quite a lot of boiling water. So when you drop the claws in, they don't drop temperature. So it's gonna maintain a rolling boil. So you know it's still always gonna be on about 95 degrees. That means that we're not gonna overcook the crab, okay? So we're gonna lay the largest claw in first. That's gonna cook for about six and a half minutes. All right, so these have been cooking now for about, for the smaller legs, for about four and a half minutes. The head's been taken about six minutes on the head. That large claw is probably about six and a half minutes. So take them out, plunge them into ice water. With prepping the crab, it's, it's, it's quite tricky because of these, these massive spines. So basically, take the joint the wrong way. You can already see that that's the, that's the amazing meat that we're trying to get to. They come out of the main part of the meat, which is in this sort of forequarter of the, of the, um, of the claw. So you just take a really nice pair of sharp scissors and just run them up and just tease it out. That's gonna come out nice and whole. But then you've also got this little tiny bit of meat in the knuckle. The easiest way to do it is just with a teaspoon. And you wanna really get every single morsel out. So the last stage you can just do with a rolling pin. And that takes that out whole. So here you've got the top part of the meat, the white meat. You've got the really beautiful prime piece of um, puck of meat, which is from this like fore part of the, um, of the leg. You've got the join that goes in between, which is a little bit of an awkward one to get. And then you've got this final last, the join, the knuckle, and then this is the last little bit at the end. Lots of amazing meat in this, uh, in this beautiful shell. So you just take off this, uh, this removable flap and underneath here, you can see these are, um, this is called the dead man's fingers. So this is basically what the crab uses to filter out the ocean. Everything else that you've got left attached to this, 
is all usable meat. So you've got a small amount of head, head meat, which has uh, got an amazing flavor. And then there's also some connective tissue around the, the top lobe of the crab. You can use all that. I, mean, I, I love native brown crab. It's, it's, it's very sweet and it's very, very flaky. Now, what you find with the king crab it is, because a lot more meat is in the legs rather than the claws, the legs do a lot more work. So the meat is a little stringier. Um, it's a lot firmer in texture, um, but it holds together. So whereas white crab meat uh, from the brown crab, they flake because it's all pr predominantly from the claws. Um, this is slightly different. So it's got a firmer texture, uh, very sweet. Like in terms of like invasive species, if you're talking about eating bloody gray squirrels or Japanese knotweed, this is like the Lamborghini of invasive species. Three really nice spoonfuls of Jerusalem artichoke puree. A little bit of the legs. So those really nice prime claws that we spoke about. And then we've got a little bit of the knuckle as well, which we're just gonna put through. And then you've got a little bit of the stuff from the, um, from the head. So a few different textures, a few different flavors. Pickle white cabbage that we've just lightly fermented. So that's just gonna go on top of the dish. Nice and delicate, just give a little bit of acidity. And then we forage some coastal sea herbs. We get a forage that goes out for us every couple of days. So this here is purslane. So it's a, it's a type of sea succulent. And then we've got some slightly more common, which is mar marsh samphire, um, available most of the year round, but, um, but seasonal at the moment. So we just gently just drape that over the top. So these are just some preserved lemons. So they're just sliced really, really nice and thin, and then just lightly pickled. Caramelized milk, which just ties the whole thing together, gives it a bit of like maltiness, a bit of richness to the dish. And then just a small amount of sorrel. So this, this is just the sorrel that we, uh, that we forage on our farm. It, it's, it's a type of sorrel called red oxalis. Remember we had that, all of that amazing brown meat from the head. So we've just made this really beautiful crab stock with that and we've just spiced it just really lightly with a little bit of fermented chili powder. Sauce the dish lightly around the, around the side. So super intense, you've got this really sweet crab meat with the sweet artichoke puree. You've got that pickled cabbage, you've got that lightly pickled lemon, which is gonna add a bit of freshness. Some lovely coastal sea veg and then to serve it, just so we all know exactly what it is, we're gonna serve it with that shell on top. So when it gets to the customer, it looks really nice and clean, simple. So nice and creamy, Jerusalem macho puree, like zingy lemon, pickled lemon, nice sweet crab meat, and then that suc succulent sea herbs just sort of tie it all together. Mm. Really good.